like your style Put you in Chanel cause it's just perfect for your smile Girl I swear for you I'd run the world, I'd run the miles The way you look at me I think I'm going insane Alright guys, how are we? What is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we are beginning, or I am beginning, a bit of a question and answer series on my six, mo six month bodybuilding prep that I uh, finished on October, shit what date was it? October the 23rd or 4th. Today's date is November the 10th. It's taken me over two weeks since finishing my show to actually... Uh, well, feel good enough and feel content enough with my physique and how things have gone post-show to actually be able to sit down happily and with a positive attitude and um, start to answer some of these questions. Because post-show, I went and binged hard. Um, not ideal, something I told myself I wouldn't do, but I did. And I've spent the last five or six days trying to bring that back. And I'm happy to say that I haven't got back to where I was, but I've, I've brought it back considerably. So the damage that I did post-show, um, physically and mentally, has been cleaned up. And that's only happened through a whole heap of discipline by myself. And I'm pretty proud of myself for doing that. So um, anyway, we're here. And I'm going to answer my first question of the day. And the first question is, how did I get to 5% body fat without tracking a single calorie um, you know I'd mentioned to a few people throughout my cut and throughout um, throughout the last few months that I was you know they asked me how do you get that lean or how do you get to 5% body fat I was putting up my my body fat percentage readings each week and um, you know people were intrigued and I couldn't tell them originally because I, I literally was not tracking a single thing not a single calorie I mean if I yeah certainly not a single calorie maybe the only macronutrient I was tracking was protein, basing my meals around a protein source, which is, you know, something, if you're looking to drop weight, and if you don't have a huge amount of, you know, knowledge on nutrition, all I'd say is create your meals around a protein source, nothing too big, and look, get away with the least amount of carbohydrates and fats surrounding that that you can. What that's going to make you um, start to think about is, is, is foods that are higher in volume, you know, in general. Um, for lesser calories, you know, foods, well not foods, condiments and sauces that are lower in calories that you can add to foods, add to your protein sources to make them really tasty without, you know, a huge amount of extra calories. So there's plenty of things I did and I've got a bit of a list here. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to run through my journey, which started on April the 13th, um, two weeks into New Zealand's coronavirus lockdown. And I had absolutely smashed myself with food uh, for the first two weeks and alcohol. So we had a, a house full of four people and we we're all just loving life, really. <laughs> you know, you could still go to the supermarket. You could still go to a bottle store. You know, most things, well, was, well most things as far as consumables were still open. So, um, yeah, eating just got ramped up. So for those first two weeks, everything was good. Then one morning I looked in the mirror and I thought, fuck man, I've, I've let this go. I'm out of shape. I don't know what's going to happen. I, don't, I, I certainly didn't have any any um, inkling of, of competing at that point. But I did want to clean things up. And so I began doing that with the exact same strategies that I used throughout the entire prep. Just like I said, using more volume foods with lesser calories, basing my meals around a protein source such as chicken or salmon or eggs. You know what I mean? And just reducing the shit in my diet. So that's how it started. That was April the 13th. On that day, I began a six-week fat loss transformation, which you can see um, on this channel. And uh, that actually continued from six weeks to 12 weeks. And that continued from a 12-week diet into a competition prep. So for the first few months, first two or three months, it was literally just overall reducing the amount of food, reducing the amount of shit, and increasing slowly but surely my expenditure, uh, my calories burnt. So I began weight training after having a fair few months off. It was only at home, it was with very light weights, but at least it was something. I went for walks in the morning, I began going for walks in the morning. My passion for actually getting up early in the morning, getting outside when it's still dark, you know, for a walk, came uh, probably about two or three months in. It didn't happen overnight. And now I can safely say, sitting here in November, that my attitude changed. My attitude towards being in shape, you know, 
living a lifestyle that's going to allow me to be in shape, which includes regular exercise, it includes, you know, sticking to these diet principles. And that's how I got through the first few months. In fact, that's how I got through the whole, the whole entire diet was, was using my intuition, looking at a meal and thinking, no, that's too much. I shouldn't be having that. I probably shouldn't be having that. And being disciplined, bro. That's what it's about. It's about knowing what you've got to do, but also following through with it and being disciplined and putting down that cookie at times. Now I'm a big sweet tooth and I can safely say that I cheated on my diet a lot. But would you call that cheating or would you call that just staying sane or would you call that just having a wee treat or would you call that just having a cookie? I mean, is it really cheating on your diet if you're not actually dieting? I'm not sure, but I certainly did have a lot of cheats. It kept me sane. I wake up the next morning, I go for my walk or my jog, I sort of reset and move on. And that's how it happened. Basically, I figured, okay, how am I going to track this? Well, I've got my Fitbit, okay, so I'm going to be able to track my calorie expenditure. I'm not tracking my calories in, but I can use the mirror. Okay, the mirror is a fantastic tool. It's a tool that's always going to be there. It's not going to go away. It's going to be consistent. Um, well, whether I've got my glasses on or not is, is, is a bit of a factor. But um, so I looked in the mirror in the morning if I was soft, if I knew that I'd smashed some food the night before. Well, you know, I'd fast for most of the day. Intermittent fasting would certainly have to be uh, one of my tools that I used. And that is just to control the overall amount of calories throughout the day. Um, also the fact that I can get up in the morning and easily go six to eight hours uh, working mentally on things such as YouTube videos and, and writing and, and, and planning and uh, conversing without the need for food, you know. It's just the way that my brain works. In fact, I'm, I'm very productive on a hungry type of feeling, which is something that Fuad Abiyad has actually touched on in the past and a lot of bodybuilders touch on. When, they are, when, when we're dieting, and we're getting leaner and we can feel hungry and we know in our head that that's only going to mean we're going to be we're going to be getting closer to our end goal that's actually a good feeling and um you know it can it can push you to to be motiva motivated to do certain things such as a whole heap of work um in a pretty condensed period of time you know what i mean you can really just hammer it out that's that's how i feel if i start eating if i start taking a break from that work to sit down and have a meal that's when who knows what's going to happen after but if i can fast i know that i'm not going to i'm not going to stop my my workflow through you know having to have a meal it's a fucking good feeling man and i i, I make the most of it pretty much every morning and i certainly did throughout my my competition diet so you know i figured if i was hungry if I was feeling hungry, I'm losing fat, um, and I'm just going to push that feeling as long as I can. A danger with that is obviously overeating at the end of the day. Pushing your fast for too long, too often, and when you're not tracking exactly what you're having in, um, that extreme feeling of hunger can mean that at the end of the day, you'll get through a couple of thousand worth of calories. You won't really know exactly how many you've taken in, but you'll still feel hungry. You know what I mean? You'll still feel empty, so you'll be like, well... Well, I can keep eating because I'm not feeling full yet, and um, I guess it's, I guess it's just a matter of me having tracked on my fitness pal for so many years in the past. I just know, I just know at this point how many calories, protein, carbs, fats. So yeah, intuition was big. So in July, at at about 10% body fat, I managed to bring my body down to about 10% body fat. Stayed there pretty consistently for a good couple of weeks, and I decided this was the point that I needed to. Um, connect up with a bodybuilding coach not so much for the nutrition but just for you know some help definitely for help with my posing and just to have someone with experience locally that I can I can rely on and I can meet with and discuss things so that's what I did I ended up uh, meeting up with Steve Orton he is a local Christchurch uh, coach and a professional bodybuilder and if you don't know who he is and you're into bodybuilding what rock have you been living under that's what I want to ask so originally I just went for posing, um, he did give me a diet, but what I realised pretty early on is that in July I was I was playing rugby, um, I was going for, for, for my walks, but cardio man, cardio with rugby was very taxing actually, it was 90 minute training twice a week and a 90 minute game, or 80 minute game. Also I began my course at the NZIS to become a personal trainer, which I'm still doing now. 
which included cardio, which included weights training. You know, my, my expenditure was huge at that point. And so any diet that Steve was going to give me, if I was going to stick to it 100%, you know, with the ups and downs of, of my calorie expenditure, it just wasn't going to work. So I, I continued to go on intuition. I continued to, if I, have a, if I had a massive day of cardio training, I would eat carbohydrates that night to fuel me for the next day because I knew that if I woke up the next day and I had to continue, if, if I woke up the next day and I had to go to NZIS and smash a big workout, you know, after being very depleted, it just wasn't um, sustainable and I still had a fair few weeks to the show. So that's how I continued for the next four or five weeks um, leading up to my first show of the year because we did do two. With Steve in my corner, I was able to drop my body fat from 10% down to 5%. We did that over about an eight week period, slowly but surely. You know, I remember the, the, first, the first reading I had with him was I think 10.9% and then it slowly but surely went down from there. I actually gained a huge amount of confidence with the fact that I was able to bring my body fat down to 10% without tracking anything, you know, and it, it hadn't actually felt that hard. So I was really pleased with that and that motivated me to continue the cut and that's what we did. So we got to 5% body fat over the next eight weeks, um, or I did. I didn't actually listen to his diet one bit. But I did listen to him in peak week because, you know, we got to the point where there's a week to go. I didn't know exactly what he thought I should do. And in fact, I didn't know what I should do. Um, so I, I did listen to him and we had a bit of a peak week protocol, uh, which I will discuss in future videos. But basically, it's just if a full depletion of carbohydrates, which I hadn't done um, ever throughout this whole entire thing because carbohydrates were my fuel source and I was still getting lean on a on a quite a big amount of carbs and, and calories but that was only because my expenditure was so high so got to the show got to the show it was a great day um, I've discussed that day in a previous video so if you want to see how things went please look at that um, but basically from that point I didn't plan on competing again so that was at the end of August and it took me about a week to decide, nah, you know what, I want to I wanna continue this. I actually want to compete again. I wasn't happy with, with my look completely. Um, it, even though it was just for fun, I still wasn't happy. I thought, you know what, I can do a bit better. And this next show that was coming up was a natural show. So this, uh, the first show that I did was untested. It was, it was with the IFBB, but it was completely untested. And this next show was with the IFBB still, but it was drug tested. So I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish 2020 off right with two shows and the final show being a drug tested show which is something I'd always wanted to do so now the hard part starts alright so it was hard enough getting to 5% body fat but the fact that I had to maintain that if not improve it over the next eight weeks from the end of August to the end of October when I competed again was not easy man it wasn't easy, I'm going to say. It was pretty much like torture. Torture. At times, you know what I mean? Mentally, if things are going well in life, if you're looking in the mirror each morning, you're seeing progress, you can stick to it pretty easily. But if things in your personal life or whatever come in and, and start to affect your moods, then sticking to a fucking diet for eight, <laughs> for eight weeks when you're only maintaining, you're not actually trying to lose, lose a huge amount of weight or, or gain a huge amount of weight, fuck it was hard. But we made it. We made it. And that's the main thing. I followed through. So I'm proud of myself. Anyways guys, this video has gone on for far too long. It's about how I got to 5% body fat, which I clearly was for a lengthy period of time without tracking a single calorie. And I think we've gone through, you know, most of, of what I did. I guess I did use a few tools at my disposal to, to help with the fat loss um, without having to track things. And they were things such as intermittent fasting like I've said you know more volume foods meals based around a protein source I, I backloaded my carbohydrates usually so I'd go through the first part of the day obviously fasting I would have one meal of carbohydrates uh, then train and then most of my carbs for the day would come post training now that would see me up until basically an hour before I went to bed I'd wake up the next morning knowing that I'd ingested those carbs knowing that I had you know, probably a fair few of those still in the system. So I'd get up, do my fasted cardio. That would effectively burn those off in my head. And then throughout the rest of the day until I began eating would be a fat loss phase. Honestly, I don't know if that <laughs> if that makes sense, but it made sense to me and it worked. Um, I, I did, you know, 
at least 15,000 steps per day that was something I was able to track and that was something I kept consistent which meant that my daily calorie burn was at least three to three and a half thousand per day um, you know I, I did make mistakes I certainly did I, I drunk alcohol multiple times in copious amounts like I said I cheated on my diet if I if I wanted something I'd have it but I knew that the next day I had to wake up and and forget about it and move on and use it as the tool that it was to keep me sane so the last thing I've got here is consistency is key and that's what I just said you know consistency is key as long as you wake up that next day and crack back into it you'll be fine um, and and basically at the end of the day I could have got to four even three percent body fat and looked so much better on stage you know it's amazing how different a body can look with one percent body fat less once you get down to seven, six, five percent body fat, you know, I, I could have looked so much better on stage, but, and I've written this right here, I simply wasn't, I simply wasn't prepared to suffer as much as I needed to. And I don't know if that's because I didn't think I could physically, I, I thought maybe that's dangerous or what, but. You know, I've since realized, especially in the last five or six days, having brought my physique back down um, after binging post-show, I know that I can suffer. And I know that I can train while suffering. I know I can train with zero calories. It's possible. It's all in the fucking head. It's all in the mind. And that's what half, half of uh, bodybuilding and half of getting down to 5% body fat is about. It's all about your mindset. So guys, that was how I got... To 5% body fat without tracking a single calorie I've probably included a whole heap more shit in there but uh, I do have more videos to shoot today about the same subject so I hope you've enjoyed guys and if you do want to know more about you know my bodybuilding journey um, definitely head over to my Instagram page if you are into bodybuilding or into the gym or know someone that is and you're looking for new gear you're looking to support a business that's from New Zealand definitely head to my business majorkeyphysiques.com uh, we've been in operation for almost two years now and I'm extremely proud of our products Major Key Physiques is a bodybuilding and fitness brand it's my brand and I'm proud of it so I welcome you to check out the website um, I welcome you to hit the like button I welcome you to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video thanks for watching peace